We're on the road again, Northampton tonight and Edinburgh tomorrow. First up, it's Halifax against Sheffield. The Blue Sox will stay in the top three no matter what happens here. But the Eagles know they must win to turn up the heat on the Saints. One place and three points ahead of them. The Challenge Cup holders now have Old Trafford and revenge for this Don Valley defeat in their sights. And what's more, they've hit a bit of form at just the right time. Victory over Castleford, so it's four games unbeaten now. But Halifax are the surprise packets of 98. After two years of trauma, they have realistic grand final ambition. And in Chris Chester, they have one of the brightest prospects in the game. Only 19, but oh so versatile. Four different positions this year. But Keith Senior is one of Super League's top try scorers. His form has helped push the Eagles to the brink of the playoffs. So two of the best of British coaches pit their wits against each other. The two Johns, Keir and Pendlebury, bring a ray of light to Northampton. Well, yes, Super League is here in Northampton. The town gets its first view of the Super League, courtesy of two fine sides. Sheffield Eagles, of course, they won the Challenge Cup at Wembley in May, and in many ways, they're just starting to recover from the aftermath of that success. Halifax, well, they are playing their best uh, football of the new summer era. Now, the idea of coming to a place like Northampton is to introduce new supporters to the game. But here in Northampton, they've got a die-hard supporter because Alan Lamb, the former England and Northampton county cricket captain, is here with me now. And Alan, I know that having seen you at Wembley many, many times, you're a real fan of this game. Yeah, it's fantastic to see it. Yeah, you know, Northampton's a real sporting town and they're always looking for something new. And uh, it's great to see the rugby league come here and uh, hopefully we'll get a good crowd. And uh, I just love it. You know, it's a, it's a game that I didn't follow as a youth. I was a union man and until I saw it about three years ago, I'm, I'm really impressed and I've taken to it. Well, you're not the only former rugby union star uh, or rather supporter in the, the crowd because some of the local Saint supporters are down here as well. And I know that when I saw you at Wembley last time, you were really cheering the Sheffield Eagles on, weren't you? I mean, that was a terrific day. Well, yeah, I always go for the underdogs. And, uh, you know, everyone said I was sitting with... Uh, I spoke to Michael Parkinson, he said, no, he said, Sheffield, no chance. I said, well, hold on. And uh, it was brilliant to, to see Sheffield come in and, and win that. Uh, it was quite exciting. Well, some of the players, of course, on show at Wembley here tonight, you were very impressed, I know, with Paul Broadbent and Dale Lawton, the two props. Yeah, Dale Lawton, I believe he's on the bench. I'm quite surprised. I think uh, he played a fantastic game and Broadbent played a fantastic game. So uh, hopefully we see a bit of action and uh, some really big hits. That's what I'm looking for. Well, you get plenty of those. And, of course, we'll also see John Bentley as well, who no doubt will bring a lot of the neutrals here. Yeah, he would do, because I, I think uh, he had that impressive trip to the uh, tour to the Lions and uh, did very well, and um, he seemed to just faded from the Union, gone back to, to, to league, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, we see a little bit of action from him tonight. Well, I'm sure you will. Thanks very much for joining us here, and I know you're anxious to go and join in the fun around this great uh, occasion tonight. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Alan. Alan Lamb, then, who is uh, joining the crowd here at the Sixfield Stadium, in Northampton tonight for a match that pits the two British coaches or the two top British coaches against each other and as far as uh, John Pendlebury and John Keir are concerned well they're quite happy with the way that the season's gone so far. The Sheffield Eagles have won the cup in 1998. We set our goals on uh, a visit to Wembley 
and the top five spot at the start of the season, as well as being competitive in every situation, right from the academy upwards. And we feel we can achieve those goals. We are being competitive, we have been to Wembley, and we do dearly want the top five. Will Halifax be in the grand final? The dark horses of Super League 3. And this meanwhile is Mercer. Mercer goes straight the way through the defence and scores a great try. Well, I think the consistency comes just from the personnel you know, and uh, the mentality of them. And, uh, you know, they're obviously very focused. Everybody's written us off, give us no chance. And even at this stage of the competition, every team we beat, you know, they go into a crisis after we beat them. Huddersfield, London, you know, uh, one or two other sides as well. So, you know, it's obviously teams you know, are underestimating us. But we can't do anything about that, you know. We've just got to concentrate on, you know, keeping our feet on the ground and uh, you know, doing all the simple things right. This now is senior. Oh, and he just goes straight through Broadbent and scores another great try. I don't see any point in having, uh, you know, elite players if you're going to sort of get them and, and rein them in. I think what you've got to do is sort of make sure that you have a certain structure that they adhere to, and then outside that they can step in and they can use their own initiative. And he can still straighten it up. Oh, Rowley's through. This is going to be a fabulous try. What a try from Rowley! I think the important thing is that you encourage your players to think on the feet and that, you know, they take you know, make the necessary decisions you know, with what's put in front of them. And uh, you know, we've got some good decision makers in our side and you know, I think it helps you know, the strength of the characters for the players. You know, when they go out on the field they know that you know, they're not relying on the coach on the sidelines. They're able to go out there and impose themselves as necessary. I, I think that the Brits within Circle League we can uh, hold our sort of heads up high. And perhaps if other Brits were given a chance, we might have more to join our exclusive little club. John Keir banging the drum for the British coaches and the crowd here at the Sixfield Stadium starting to build up now. Not only can I see Halifax Blue Sox jerseys and also Sheffield Eagles, but also Wigan are represented here. There's a Test jersey I can see, British Lions jersey, the local rugby union team, as we've said, Australian national team, and Bradford Bulls as well. They have travelled to Northampton to be here with us tonight. And that really is what the Roadshow is all about, introducing the game to a brand new audience. That we're doing here tonight, over this weekend, and all of next weekend as well. Well, I wonder who are the stars that uh, these people have turned out to see tonight? Who are the men that Steve-O believes could turn this game? The fast track conditions should suit the Blue Sox veteran flyer John Bentley down to a tee tonight. The man they call Bentos is back to top form, having scored three tries in the last four games. And the former British Lion loves nothing better than playing against the Eagles, having scored no less than 11 tries in previous Halifax Sheffield encounters. Bentley also feels he's got plenty of football left in him. Despite being 31 years of age, the winger still possesses an amazing turn of pace, and he will give his opposite number, Bright Sodji, a tough game this evening. After almost 10 years as a professional, Bentley has yet to pick up a major winner's medal and probably feels this year's grand final offers him a golden opportunity to pick up a bit of silverware at long last. But one man who has tasted the glory of a winner's medal is the underrated utility player Martin Wood, who has surprised many with the way he's handled a standoff position over the past few weeks. Wood is a talented ball distributor and has a neat dummy and sidestep for such a solid man. He's also proved to be a vital standing goal kicker during the absence of Mark Aston has landed nine goals and two vital one-pointers in the last three games. Aston, of course, returns tonight on the bench and it could prove to be a crucial tactical move when coach John Keir decides to send him into the fray alongside this man, Mr. Wood. So here we are at the Sixfield Stadium in Northampton as the Roadshow experiment gathers pace. Tomorrow it's north of the border to Bonnie Scotland. Hearts Tyne Castle ground stages Bradford and London. Next week it's back to Gateshead on Friday for Hull Sharks against Huddersfield Giants. Then on Saturday the 25th we're in South Wales for Warrington against Castleford at Cardiff's Arms Park. And the Roadshow rolls into Swansea on Sunday week for the last match of the tour. What a finish, Wigan Saints. That's the menu then over this weekend and next, but right now the coin toss. Carl Harrison on the left is the captain of Halifax. Paul Broadbent, the captain of Sheffield.
Let's speak to uh, Carl Harrison first. Uh, Carl, one defeat, I think, in the last eight games. You must go into this game full of confidence. Obviously, they're confident, yeah, but uh, Sheffield are a good run. They're a class team, and I think it's a must win for Sheffield tonight. Uh, if they don't win, it could be the end of their season, but uh, we're, we're certainly up for it. We're going to enjoy the game. It was very close the last time you met them. I mean, you won at the Don Valley, but that was tight, wasn't it? Well, it's always tight. Yeah, Halifax Sheffield games are always tight. It's local derby, and uh, I can't see this one being any different. Two big sets of forwards and uh, some quality halfbacks. Let's bring in one of those big forwards, Paul Broadbent. Paul, you've got three in a row and wins in a, a row under your belt, so there's confidence in the Eagles camp now. Yeah, we're starting to get to get back to the form that we showed just before the Challenge Cup final, and uh, that's that's what we, we wanted to get back to. A few of his injuries are coming back now, and we, we, we're up for a good game. We, we know that we need to win to, to keep our top five hopes alive, and uh, we're three points adrift now, and if we can pick up two points, then we know that we're in with a shell. Thanks a lot. In with a shout of getting to Old Trafford on Grand Final Day, and this will be the scene at the Theatre of Dreams. You can be there with us by taking part in our viewers' Man of the Match competition, which is running right the way through this Super League season. All you have to do is vote on that telephone number, pray that your name comes out of our computer first, you then get two Grand Final tickets, and plus all the winners go forward into our draw at the end of the campaign to win a VIP box at Old Trafford on the night. Old Trafford under floodlights on the 24th of October. Here now under blue skies in Northampton, let's check out the way the Blue Sox line up. Damien Gibson's their full back, John Bentley, Dio Powell, David Bouveng, and Peretti Tuolangi, the three quarters. Chris Chester and Gavin Clinch at halfback. And the forwards, Carl Harrison, who's the skipper, Martin Hall on loan from Wigan, and Richard Marshall, the front row, Gary Mercer and Carl Gillespie in the second row, it's Martin Moana, the loose forward wearing 13. And on the bench, and this normally is where the strength of a club lies, where the good players are waiting for their chance, and this lot are pretty hot for John Pendlebury. Kelvin Skerritt, Paul Rowley, Des Clark and Jamie Bloom. Now the Sheffield Eagles, the Challenge Cup winners, of course. David Watson, though, is operating these days at fullback. Linton Stott, Willie Morganson, Keith Senior and Bright Sodji. Martin Wood and Gareth Stevens gets the nod at scrum half, despite the fact that Mark Aston is now fit. Up front, it's Paul Broadbent, Darren Turner and Steve Malloy. Paul Carr and Darren Shaw in the second row with Rod Doyle, the Australian loose forward. And here again, strength in depth for Sheffield now, and that is reflected in their bench. Sovatabua, the Fijian, Taiwa, the Kiwi, Aston and Lawton, of course, the two heroes of the win at Wembley for coach John Keir. This is the scene in the Halifax Blue Sox dressing room. Coach John Pendlebury just adding the last word or two of advice and comfort to his players and the same going on across the corridor in the Sheffield Eagles room with coach John Keir hoping that they can put a bit of pressure back on St Helens to get into the top five so Sheffield with five victories four matches though they have now gone without being beaten they are right back in the hunt had a bit of a form slump around about the time of Wembley Wembley apart of course and they've uh, scored just about as many as they have conceded. Keith Senior on 10 tries, overtaken last weekend by Francis Cummins, who ran in that hat-trick for Leeds at the top of the try-scoring list. And with Miss Sheffield, Julie Melvin, as their special matchday mascot here at Northampton, Paul Broadbent leads out the Sheffield Eagles. They looking for two points, Julie Melvin looking for points of a different kind in September when she travelled to Blackpool to take part in the Miss UK competition. She's one of the favourites for that, and then she'll be hoping to take the name of Sheffield forward with her into the Miss World contest in the Seychelles later on in the year. Halifax waiting for the knock to come on their dressing room door now. And out they come led by Carl Harrison. What a season the Blue Stocks are having after the traumas of the past couple of years. On course, they hope to emulate Steve Sims finishing centenary year. Steve Sims, then the coach of the Blue Sox, when they ended third place in the table. Third in the table now. They can't be overhauled during round 14 on the road, so they enter the Sixfield Stadium in a pretty comfortable position. And the firecrackers overhead and the supporters who have travelled down 
the M1 motorway, along with Billy and Bluey, their club mascots. And this is a big night for Halifax, it's a big night for Super League here in Northampton as well. And it's got a little bit of history, has Rugby League in this part of the world. 1995, they had a couple of games in the Emerging Nations World Cup. They were staged here, Scotland against the United States, Moldova against Morocco. And in 1908 and 1912, two tests were staged in Coventry, not too far away from this Northampton Stadium. And Coventry itself, all, uh, that was rather at Villa Park, those uh, test matches. Coventry themselves, they had a team in the Rugby League for a couple of years until they bowed out. The mascots making it a very colourful occasion, they've shaken hands. That's what, of course, this game engenders, a little bit of family spirit. And Martin Hall, what a game for him, his third club in 1998, having been on loan to Castleford and, of course, now here, having been loaned out by Wigan. Russell Smith is the match referee. John Pendlebury, the centre of the screen there, with his walkie-talkie on, keeping in touch with uh, the trainer's bench downstairs. So we're just about ready then for this, the uh, second Super League uh, match on the road. All we need to do is just uh, move the tarpaulin, which protected the magnificent six-field turf from the rigours of the uh, firework display. And Gary and Kath Hetherington, of course, very much involved in the Sheffield Eagle story. Gary now is the chief executive of the Leeds Rhinos. Kath Hetherington is uh, one of the leading contenders for the Gateshead franchise. And watching here as uh, John Keir waits for the tarpaulin to be cleared and the referee to blow the whistle and get this game underway Steve-O a really keenly contested match in prospect here well I think the fans won't be disappointed and I'm sure that uh, Halifax they'll want to keep up there putting the pressure on Leeds and Wigan of course Sheffield they will come out with guns blazing they are just hovering around that top five and that's what it's all about this year you've got to make the playoffs the top five to have any chance of getting to the big grand final at Old Trafford. Well, they have uh, had a couple of weeks off these uh, two sides. They've trained hard during their little mid-season break. No holidays for these players. They've been uh, banging it out on the training fields. And we will see, I think, the uh, rewards of their endeavours here over the next 80 minutes. That's Carl Harrison, tackled by Paul Broadbent. That will be one of the big features of this match, I feel. The clash between the big packs of forwards here that's the last tackle for Halifax this opening set of six the ball is back with Gavin Clinch he kicks the ball downfield looking for the touch on the far side but David Watson prevents it from running out that's a good chase that's a terrific chase from uh, Ferretti to Ilangi beautiful kick and chase there that's good tactics and that's also good defense there Martin Hall that ripped the shirt from him well, they mean business, both these players, and I'm sure that the sets of forwards will really get into it. I think that's where the success lies for either side. If the forward pack can get on top, then both teams have got some tremendous three-quarters out wide. But the battle of the forwards has to be won first. Linton Stott it was, by the way, who had the uh, jersey ripped from him, doing a uh, full Monty early here for the people of Northampton. Head-to-head -head in all meetings since 1984, Halifax uh, with ten victories, Sheffield with five, but they first met in 1992, so it's a pretty recent history. Good kick there by the standoff, Martin Wood, who's uh, made a good fist of that, normally a loose forward, but turning into a tremendous utility player for his coach, John Keir. As I said, over the last three weeks, he's handled the standoff position and rather surprised this man. He always knew his quality as playing in the forwards, and Martin Wood possesses a very good ball distribution game, and that's going to be important for the Eagles' success tonight. Well, this uh, area of Great Britain tasting Super League for the very first time in this magnificent six-field stadium. It really does, I think, offer a blueprint for the future for the game in this country. A lovely, compact little stadium in a greenfield site just on the outskirts of town, communication perfect, uh, retail park around about outside as well, so just about everything catered for here. And now watching as Chester makes a great break for the Blue Sox, 
he finds support inside him, Dio Powell. And Dio Powell wrestles away from the attempted tackle from Watson. He is John Bentley. John Bentley is tackled by Bright Sodji and he's in touch. Bentley claiming the tackle was completed before he was slid into touch. And he's right, the referee gives them the penalty. Well, it was pretty close to it, wasn't it? Well spotted there by the uh, official on the touchline. Halifax then still in possession. This is Gary Gillespie, flicks it back to Gavin Clinch. Clinch then looks for support, it's there with Mercer. And Mercer making a good strong run towards the post. Sheffield Eagles under some early pressure here then in Northampton with Clinch for Halifax. Back on the inside it goes to Harrison and he drives it in but Broadbent gets to him and Martin Wood. Five metres short of the line now. Hall was the dummy half. He gives it to Moana. Moana stretches out and scores. Martin Moana, the Halifax Blue Sox loose forward. He gets the first try. His seventh, though, of Super League 3. What a great effort. And it all came, of course, as a result of that penalty out wide. And this is the penalty. You can see that the progress of Bentley had been stopped. He was an inches away from that whitewash there, and once they moved him, they took the quick tap, got into this position. It was a run from Clinch that set them up there, but Moana threw the dummy, and they just went a little bit too slow out of their block. Loose forward didn't though, Martin Moana, very quick thinking. Notice how they moved there, but then when he brings the ball back on the inside, they hesitate. They really should have applied the pressure, pushed him back, they failed to do that, and have paid the price. Well, that try was the 30th of Martin Moana's Halifax career and uh, the try has been improved by Gavin Clinch and so it's six points to nil to the Halifax Blue Sox. Moana with the try and Clinch with a successful conversion from Bang in front of the sticks. He averages one every other game does Martin Moana, the 24-year-old. Had a spell with Auckland in 1995. Well, that's a great start, Steve-O, for the Blue Sox. Certainly is, and uh, quick thinking there, but full credit to Halifax. They kept that ball alive. I mentioned that the uh, halfback, Gavin Clinch, and the standoff, Chris Chester, they combined extremely well. Chester went striding through, and I'm sure that the message has gone straight. Oh, that's a bad mistake. Martin Wood, he says it came off his knees. Oh, he got the fingertips, the fingertips to it. Well, that really is an awful start by the Eagles. And you can see clearly there that it, it hit the leg first, but then caught the fingertips. And this again could prove costly. Yes, because Halifax are back in possession and just eight metres from the line. To Elangi plays the ball to Clinch. He looks wide and finds Gillespie. Yes. Hall to Harrison. Remember the try that uh, Carl Harrison scored at the new Shea when we saw him the other Saturday against the London Broncos. This is Chester. He just loses the ball, though. Watson gratefully picks up the loose ball. Well, there again, we see that the standoff Chester nearly went halfway through the tackle. And this is the big problem for the Eagles at the moment. There's one going down low. That's fine. But the second man coming into the tackle, they're not making the big impact as they should. Broadbent makes a big impact though, running with the football yeah. under his arm. Gareth Stevens was the dummy half. This now is Darren Shaw. Good tackle from Gary Mercer. Here's Watson again. And that's Turner. A robustious run almost through the body of Gavin Clinch. The kick downfield is a pretty good one. The chase is pretty good as well. Gibson's trapped in goal. Sodji. Well, he really got his skates on then, chased the loose ball and trapped the Halifax fullback in the in-goal area. Tremendous kick there by Stevens and bright Sodji. Well, the kick is only as good as the chase and you can see here, he split them to it and it just bobbled in. It was Doyle that made the kick through and you'll see Sodji just come through here. This is a great defensive effort. If you're new to the game, and uh, I know there are many, many people who are joining us on the Roadshow fixtures, both at home and in the stadium for the first time, it means when the player's trapped in goal, it's a dropout from underneath the sticks, and it means that the Eagles have got the ball back, but it was a great kick downfield, and now Halifax are all caught offside. Plenty to choose from there. 
Chester, Mercer, all very eager to move. And you can see there the high shot showing the referee Russell Smith. And he had four or five to select from. Chester being one of them. So these autos, uh, Steve-O, Linton Stott wasn't too impressed with the tackle from Gary Mercer. He was lucky the referee was looking for the offside, otherwise he could have been penalised for uh, just swinging a punch at Mercer. As it is, Sheffield are in possession with Broadbent. Harrison is the man who buries him. He now is Turner. Good driving run from the little hooker. And he gets over the line, but he's held up. It was not grounded, says Russell Smith, so it'll be a scrum down with head and feet to the blue, to the Sheffield Eagles. Well, you can see the official got himself in a beautiful position there, and good work by Clinch. Got underneath the hooker, spun him around. You'll see Clinch there grabbing at the football, making sure that Turner couldn't force it. This is Watson. The runner on the angle is senior. He's almost through. It was a great tackle from Chester, and it had to be as well. This is Watson who's joined the line. Now Broadbent sees a hole and goes for it. Broadbent is hauled down right underneath the Halifax sticks. Turner, back it comes to Watson. Watson then on an angle run, it finds Carr. And Carr is still going, though, they're still pumping. Harrison and Chester with the tackle. Watson off the ground into the arms of Stevens. This now is Shaw. Shaw flicks it back and Martin Wood takes over. Big test again here then of this Halifax defence. A drive from Big Steve Malloy. That's the last tackle on this set of six for the Sheffield Eagles. Turner is the man at dummy half. Going on his own, Turner as well. Had to stretch the arm out, but great defence again from Halifax. They kept him out, that's the turnover. Good work by the hooker, Martin Hall there. And that was great defence by the Blue Sox. They worked overtime because Sheffield really were running the angles. You could see that they were trying to utilise Gareth Stevens, Martin Wood and the hooker Darren Turner. That's a telling statistic, Steve-O, those four missed tackles from Sheffield early. That's why Halifax have the 6-0 lead, because they haven't missed one yet. We well, made the point, didn't we, that uh, one are going down, but the other one, they're not finishing the man off. And you can see they're just hesitating. They're allowing Halifax to get over that advantage line. Clinch with the kick again. Over the top, and... Uh, might just run a little bit long, it does. Of course, strange surroundings here at Northampton. The uh, players, the kickers, like Gavin Clinch, still having their bearings set for the kicks. And I understand that uh, Bill Arthur's got a bit of news about that from pitch side. Yes, both sides, Eddie, are interested in the dimensions of, of uh, this pitch. It's very similar to the Shea in that it's a uh, good six or seven metres shorter than is usual. The width is about the same, but the width is virtually identical to the Wembley width. So that uh, should suit Sheffield, who were here last night practising, especially practising their kicking on this pretty tight pitch. Halifax chose not to do that, but they're probably at home in these sort of surroundings, given their, their new Shea Stadium. Indeed so. John Pendlebury, their coach, uh, electing to bring his team down south today and not take advantage of a possible overnight stop. Sheffield Eagles did it the other way round. This now is Paul Carr, hauled down though by Mercer and Harrison. It's the last tackle here for the Eagles, and it's with Martin Wood. He'll put the little kick in. It's a good kick too. That will hang, and it bounces. Still on the last tackle. The Linton start knocked the ball forward. Good refereeing there by Russell Smith. You can see that Stott definitely got a hand to it. Also there as well. Rather than give the penalty for the offside, it was just a changeover. Well, I'm sure that Sheffield coach John Keir will be getting the message out to move forward. He's got to get into the face of these Halifax players. Well, Sheffield Eagles lost to Halifax at Don Valley. John Keir watched his men then lose 28-22 uh, in a thriller. If it's half as good as that, Northampton is in for a treat. It's been pretty fast and furious in the opening 12 minutes here as it is. Halifax ahead 6-0. Bentley's after this with Sodji. Sodji does well. Bentley claiming the knock-on. Non-forthcoming. Well, not only that, the situation where they didn't want to play the football and the referee could have penalised them for that. He does so well as Bright Sodji, and Bentley says, get on with it. Well, that could have been penalised. You've got to get up and play the ball straight away. Don't hesitate. Now Broadbent 
great marauding run from Broadbent down the middle. Watson was on his inside, but Broadbent elected instead to take the tackle. This is Doyle now, and he is senior. Flicks the ball back to Sodji, who loses it under pressure from Chris Chester. So Bentley has it back for Halifax Blue Sox. Well, an enterprising uh, passage of play there, but they really have wasted it. Sodji coming back on the inside. It was a neat little pass, though, by Keith Senior, who was in fine form as a big centre. To Ilangi now for the Blue Sox. He's saying a missed opportunity there. and it's, uh, it's not good viewing, I'm afraid, for the coach, John Keir. Missing so many tackles and also giving away a golden opportunity there. Good work in the defensive department by the Blue Sox, though. Here's Clinch again. Little chip over the top. It could come up for him. Well read by Watson. Terrific anticipation from Watson there, and he gets to the halfway line as well before he's tackled. Good work, though, by Gavin Clinch. You could see that Sheffield did not have a sweeper. He kicked early in the tackle count and nearly caught David Watson out there. Oh, oh that's high from Harrison. Harrison. Linton well, Stott felt that. A little bit of a chat from the official Russell Smith, and rightly so. Well, he's in the wars, isn't he, Lyndon Stott? Caught a neat one from Mercer earlier. And more than a neater one from the skipper, Carl Harrison. Well, the sun's streaming down here at uh, the Sixfield Stadium, but for the second match on the roadshow in a week, we've got a beautiful rainbow over the far side of the ground above the uh, stand over there, which means there might be a little bit of rain in the air somewhere. Let's hope it doesn't arrive here because Malloy is driving the ball in for the Eagles. Missed out at Wembley, of course, Steve Malloy, determined to make up for that by an appearance at Old Trafford. Here now is Watson, who was very much involved in the Challenge Cup win. So was Paul Carr. Good defence, though, again from Mercer and from Gavin Clinch. Stevens gives it width to Wood, and Wood will stab it through, looking for the runner out wide. Willie Morganson, but Tuilangi was there first to it. Just hacked the ball dead. It'll be a dropout from underneath his own posts. Neat little kick through there by the standoff ward, but good work from Tuilangi. Anticipated that the chip was on. Interesting to see that Martin Wood running out wide. Normally the standoff stands in the centre of the field of play, but uh, they utilise him as though he's an extra forward at the moment. Good length on these dropouts from underneath their own post, Halifax. Linton Stott now to run the ball back at the Blue Sox defence. Can't get away from uh, Carl Gillespie. Wood gives it to Watson and he then finds Senior. Good ball then back to Paul Carr. It was good play. Good play from offside. Sheffield. It's offside against the Halifax player. Dio Powell dropped on it. Could have been either one or two here. Well, Carr panicked to get the ball away. Offside against Bentley and then Powell dropped on it anyway and he also was ahead of Gary Mercer. Well, Bentley talking to the official and saying, well, he didn't know anything about it. It came at it at such speed that he couldn't control it. He wasn't going to be kidded on that occasion, was Russell Smith. Well, under a lot of pressure, full credit to Halifax, their defence has been solid so far. But can they withstand more pressure here that will be applied to them by the uh, Sheffield Eagles? Unbeaten in four, three wins in the draw, the draw at Warrington, back on course. And 11 metres short of the line, they play it here, Turner will scamper forward. Good, strong run again, trying to lift Chester up and off his feet and carry himself over the line. Wood gets the pass away to Watson, and there's obstruction. Morganson came flying through looking for the pass that never came, and that obstructed the Halifax defender who was looking for the tackle. Well, he should have given him it. That was the reason why the move was on, and Morganson couldn't believe it, neither could David Watson, who realised that uh, he should have offloaded. And as soon as the man went across and Watson utilised that, it prevented the Halifax player making any attempt to the tackle. It's a very simple obstruction. And again, the pressure is released. It must be worrying for 
the Sheffield players and their coach that they're getting themselves in good position but either giving away a silly penalty or losing the football. On halfway, Martin Hall flicks the ball inside. Now then Chester, oh, he's fumbled it and knocked that ball forward. Put under a lot of pressure there by the loose forward, Rod Doyle. And you could see there that the standoff Chester just took his eyes off the football. He was more intent looking at the would-be tackler, Doyle. Very talented youngster though, Chris Chester. Certainly a star of the future. Making a real big name for himself in Super League. This is Watson again. No stranger to the fullback job though, uh, David Watson. Good quick hands, Morganson. It's trapped. Here's Malloy. Good tackle though from Gillespie. Stevens to Broadbent. Goes away from Harrison. Can't get away from Gary Mercer. Martin Wood. Darren Shaw. Little chip over the top from Shaw. An invitation to stop to chase. Oh, and that ball stayed in play, and Tuilangi had to pick it up and take the tackle. Well, I'm not so sure that his uh, foot wasn't on the whitewash there. Looking to get away with that. Well, he has got away with it. This is Martin Hall, if indeed it was, on the white stuff. Harrison. Well, you could see there, Eddie, that the Sheffield defence, they're not moving as one line. There's one going up, a couple are hanging back, and that is not a good thing to be doing, especially against a Halifax side that have scored some fine tries this season. Great charge down by Senior. The kick ahead from Bentley. It was charged down, so it's not classified as a knock on that. Came off his legs anyway. Not so sure that Senior knew much about that, but uh, good work anyway in the end. It's Turner. Oh, That'll be a penalty. Stolen. One on one. Oh, not so sure. Referee is convinced. Looks like two to me. Gillespie had joined the uh, fray. Yes, he had a hand on him, didn't he? Sure did. I take apologies from time to time. <laughs> Mr. Smith couldn't hear you. We can hear him. Mr. Smith can't hear you. Moana, score of the try. Good tackle by Martin Wood there. Had to be as well. Such a strong man. The loose forward, Martin Moana. Here's Dio Powell. Goes through senior. Gets a good ball away. It's flicked off the fingers of Mercer. And this is Chester who takes it on. Gets to the 20-meter line. Hall is the dummy half. The runner, Moana. Well, they're allowing them acres of space, Halifax. And Sheffield have to move up. A little bit quicker than this. Clinch. Good ball to Powell if he could have taken that in. I think he had Keith Senior wrong footed. Always dipping though was the pass. There you see it. Had to reach pretty low. 50 50 chance. Well, Dio Powell, who couldn't take the ball in there, one of a number of players involved in the Welsh squad for Sunday's International at the Autoquest Stadium in Witness against emerging England. And no doubt Andy Goodway, the English coach, and Clive Griffiths, the Welsh coach, watching this match very carefully indeed, as we will be watching their team on Sky Sports 3 Sunday at 3 o'clock when we bring you that match live from Widnes. That, of course, the match that ends the weekend, and the weekend continues uh, tomorrow when we're at Bradford against London up in Edinburgh. Join us on Sky Sports 1 from 7, and if you're Watching this in Scotland and somewhere near the Tynecastle Stadium, the home of Heart of Midlothian, it would be great to see you there for the visit of the champions in London, the top two in Super League last year. Champions and runners-up. What a treat you've got north of the border tomorrow. If it's half as competitive as this, there will be no complaints. 22 minutes gone, just the one try and goal to Halifax. 6-0, they lead. And it's with Mercer. Now it's with Des Clark, who's just on. Richard Marshall this is Bentley 
cutting in field as he so often does when he starts with the football out wide looking for work looking for tackles and he gets one that's a blood bin change clinch good short ball Harrison puts it down went without it there just a little bit behind not too happy with the pass as well from the little halfback if looks could have killed then he wasn't too impressed he got a big knock though a couple of seconds ago it was a big hit from uh, Malloy a couple of changes here by John Pendlebury Paul Rowley comes on for Martin Hall and also Carl Harrison who dropped the ball that results in this scrum has been replaced by Kelvin Skerritt well I think Carl Harrison may have been injured in that uh, impact tackle Steve Malloy really gave it to him got the shoulder right into the ribcage Darren Shaw also jogging off here for Sheffield Eagles but he's got a bit of blood coming from his ear you notice there so he's in the blood bin this is uh, Fetu Taiwa the Kiwi international now this is Bright Soji Getting through a lot of work is the uh, prop forward Steve Malloy. Steven, Stevens to Broadbent. Good strong run again from Broadbent as he does all through the match for his team. This now is senior. Ten tries so far this season, Keith Senior. Good work there by Sheffield. Good break. And then the quick play, the ball. And they've Doyle. got Halifax on the back foot. It's a great run from Rod Doyle. But it's on the last tackle, so it's the turnover, and Steve Malloy has done a lot of work. And so John Keir spells him and brings Dale Lawton into the fray after 24 minutes. Alan Lamb will be pleased with that because he picked out uh, Dale Lawton before the match as one of the real heroes of the Wembley win. And there is Lawton trying to get in on Dio Powell. And he does with a little help from his hooker, Turner. That's one feature about this game is the substitutes bench. Both sides very strong indeed. Don't really uh, lose much when any of those players come on. No, it's a 17 man game, isn't it, these days? At this pace, yeah. Come on, Rod. Rowley and Des Clark. It went back off the fingertips of Tuilangi, says Russell Smith, so play on. And Tuilangi fancies a chase. Looked to the referee, thought he was impeded as he chased his kick downfield. You have none of it. And that was stolen. He said there was one on there, back chat, it'll give him another 10 metres. And there was another man there, or loitering anyway, with intent. Bouvang just had a hand on it. Uh, well, I think Bouvang had perhaps just missed him. Well, they got away with one earlier, and he's picked one up now. Then a little word or two from someone. And further 10 metres marched. So Sheffield with Taiwan now, and here's Soji. Again, they're bringing Soji back on the inside, but uh, they're not going to be fooled, this Halifax defence. And to give you some indication how strong Halifax defence is, is that Sheffield are having to go to the option of the kick on most occasions in their set of six. Lawton will try and charge his way through. Rowley was there, and so too Chester. Stevens and Turner now. Here's Gary Stevens again. Takes something to bring the little fella down. Quick play of the ball. Halifax could be in trouble here. Watson. Senior's on his inside. Senior charging for the line. And they went for the power play on the last tackle. They nearly got there. They were half a metre short. It's the turnover. Well, that's the third time that the Eagles have opted for the power play. And the big centre tried his damnedest. Only half a metre short, but again, Halifax defence scrambles back. Away. Mercer. Turner has hold of his shirt. Lawton has hold of his neck. Skerritt. He was tugged round the neck by Dale Lawton again. Uh, just a touch too high over the top. First impact was all right. Not a swinging arm at all, but another one came in. It does attract them like uh, bees to the honeypot, doesn't he, when Kelvin Skerritt 
takes the football up. Of course, Skerritt will be the well skipper on Sunday. So expect a bit of fireworks, not just here, but uh, he'll be wound up for that one, Eddie. Yes, he will. Rowley, Skerritt. Yes, Kelvin Skerritt is uh, emulating his uncle Trevor by captaining the Welsh in that international against emerging England. This is Gibson now. Damien Gibson, another man in the Welsh squad. The Australian qualifies by descent. Powell, yet another Welshman. You can see why Clive Griffiths is anxious about this game. This is Moana. Moana down a blind alley, going, trying to go round Martin Wood. Here's Rowley. Good defence from Lawton. Forced the little hooker back. That's the last tackle for Halifax. Mercer. Clinch. That'll be forward anyway. And that was on the last, so that'll be the turnover. Trying to go through the halfway. He wanted to kick the start with. And Stevens just got to him in the end. Impact was enough to send the ball forward. Now Watson for Sheffield. Nowhere for him to go with David Bouveng all around him. Been playing him at full back as John Keir, the Eagles coach, Dave Watson. But uh, don't be surprised if he brings Watson up into the fray if it stays like this. Sheffield desperate for points. He's normally a standoff is the fullback David Watson tonight. Good contest this. Nothing to choose between the two sides, just a try and a goal. 11 minutes to half time. Sheffield coming more and more into it. But the kick on the last from uh, Gareth Stevens. Finds touch over there. Good kick. Now they will hope that uh, from the scrum they will force the error from the Blue Sox. Not a bad little kick either from the little halfback. Taking his chance well. Gareth Stevens in the absence, of course, of Mark Aston, who's been off for several weeks. Aston on the bench. Oh, yeah. And his, uh, his father, by the way, was in the uh, Halifax team that won the championship in 1986. Morris <laughs> Lindsay, the Super League Europe managing director, chatting to one of the guests here at uh, Northampton. Well, that's a silly penalty to give away. And again, they relieve the pressure. Good run there by Tuilangi. It's a live wire. Bentley now for Halifax again. Paul Carr watching him so closely, as was uh, Fetu Taiwa. Here's Mercer, good strong run, he bounced off two, goes back for more, Gary Mercer. Oh, bit of a, bit of a punch thrown there by Mercer. Lawton got up grinning. Oh, too high there by Sodji, nearly lost him. Dio Powell grounded on the 30-metre line, second effort by Sodji. This is Clinch, he spreads it wide, and Des Clark. Here's Moana. Good run from Moana, lovely ball as well to Rowley. And Rowley gets a flick pass back to Chester, brilliant try. Rowley created it, Chris Chester scored it, and that is a sensational try. Chris Chester with try number four, but put that down to Paul Rowley and his quick thinking and a lovely flick pass. Second effort there. The standoff, Chris Chester, fully deserving that try. But as Eddie mentioned, the hooker rolling, just come off the bench, back on the inside, and this is where Sheffield have been ripped apart. They're not moving forward. Once the ball goes out, they've got to continue moving up. They don't do that, and Chester has chimed in with try number two, keeping the ball alive. And once they brought the ball back, you can see there, good work from Moana. Rowley sets off. Perfect pass. What an offload. Well, he's one of the best youngsters in the game, and uh, his good form of 1998 has been recognised by Andy Goodway, called into the emerging England squad for this week. Chris Chester of Halifax with that try. And what's more, he has crossed near the post, so it makes Gavin Clinch's job with the conversion so much easier. And the Halifax supporters enjoying that moment. Now Clinch with one from one. 
10 goals prior to tonight. Two now, so that's 12 for the season. Five against London, five against Huddersfield. And he might well be getting the kicking job permanently. We well, can see that the defence out wide, they're moving in a group, but once it came back in the inside, you can see the two on the blind side. You can't have a rest in Super League, I'm afraid, and that's what they were doing. And great offload here, even though the tackle was completed. Mark Aston is being uh, spoken to by his coach, John Keir, and it looks like the Eagles are going to make the change. Mark Aston only on the bench tonight, making his comeback. After uh, eight matches out, he was uh, injured in a, a DIY accident at home. And I must say that my uh, adage when it comes to DIY is that the uh, initials just stand for do it yourself because uh, if you nearly sever a finger, it puts you out of the game for eight weeks. Well, I think John Keir had no option but to bring on the man of his experience, Mark Aston, he realises they are just not getting it together in the defence. That attack is good. They're doing everything right there, but missing tackles, and I'm afraid they certainly need Aston to offside, lead the way. Offside against Halifax as Aston comes on. The DIY man. What I meant by that remark, Steve, about DIY is if anyone asks me to do a job, I say do it yourself. Mm. I thought that's what you meant. <laughs> or get someone else to do it for you. Get a little man that does. Hmm. Get back, Ken, back, quickly, walk. He is broadbent. Well, they're desperate to score now, and uh, surely they'll put the crisscross move. Turner off the ground to Aston. First touch back after eight weeks. This now is senior. Great defence, though, from uh, Skerritt and Rowley. Well, they put the move on, and Skerritt picked it up very quickly. And that, again, is good defence. Turner trying to pinch one just as he did at Wembley. Good defence again, though. Five, get up, get up, five. Aston, now he tries to plunder one, and he's held up as well. And for the umpteenth time, Sheffield gets it within half a metre on the last tackle, and are held out. Four They're power. repelling all borders. Four power plays, and they've come up with nothing. And again, Skerry putting himself about. Come away. Two come great on, tackles Murphy. by Skerry. Really up for this match. And on that occasion, it was Mercer also that uh, stopped the run by Mark Aston. Kelvin Skerry with a cut eye. Still on the field. Bouveng does well. Gets it away to Gillespie. And he's all wrapped up. Been a feature, hasn't it, from the Halifax side, the offloading. Once they go through the would-be tacklers, spinning in the tackle, it's a, a ploy that their coach, John Pendlebury, has utilised all season to great effect as well. Watson picks up the loose ball, and there it is, 17 offloads to five by the Blue Sox. John Pendlebury well pleased, I think, at the moment with the 35 and a half minutes that have elapsed in this match. Well, obviously, be pleased with the two uh, uh, two tries, should I say, and the 12 points. But I think the biggest feature would be the fact that they've repelled everything that Sheffield have thrown at them. Pretty solid defence, and uh, they've been getting back very quickly. Sheffield have been making the breaks, but their scrambling defence from the Blue Sox has been superb. Aston gets the ball out wide to Doyle. Doyle, lovely ball back inside, but it was straight into the arms of Mercer. Read it well there. Ty Ware was shouting for the ball. Back on the inside. And yet again, a chance goes begging. Nice offload there by the loose forward. This is Damien Gibson. Oh, good high there from Stevens. Yeah, oh, and then a little flop as well from Turner. I'm well, not so sure about the flop. More of a, an elbow going down. This is the incident where Stevens goes far too high. And then watch Turner. And it is. It's gone away. And then Turner comes in and tried to chop his head off. Unfortunate not to just get uh, not impressed, is he? Gibson? Right, so. Pretty fortunate there that the referee, Russell Smith, just uh, ordered the penalty. Caution on the run there. 
couple have been reversed by John Keir, Darren Shaw back on. Here's Skerritt for Halifax, whose uh, coach, John Pendlebury, by the way, has uh, just agreed a new two-year deal at Thrum Hall. He resigned earlier this season, within hours uh, took the decision back, rescinded his notice, and since then, at uh, the new Shea, they have never looked back. Proving a handful, isn't it, for Eddie Tuilangi. Here's Gillespie. Bouveng wrestles his way back to his feet. Rowley and a drop goal attempt from Clinch. And off the uh, outside of the boot, Sodji collects it. Good call as well by Bright Sodji. Send off Martin Wood was getting underneath it. And Sodji said, it's mine. Oh, he's taking the ball. Clinch got the ball away. It's a try here for Powell. Dio Powell. Turner went for him after he put the ball down. Powell didn't like it. But there's a touch of frustration there between Turner and Powell. The referee, though, has not yet given the try. Well, he wants to see whether when Clinch took that ball away that he was a one-on-one. -on -one. For you new viewers, when you take the ball one-on-one, -on -one, that's OK. But if there's more than one in attendance, see the ball being taken there, and it was definitely one-on-one. -on -one. That is good play there by Gavin Clinch, a little halfback. And Chester serves up the ball. Powell, and you can see Turner, not the best effort. Frustration, you can do without that. I think we all know what the decision is going to be, and the try it is. Dio Powell, Welsh international. Four tries in his last four appearances, seven in all. That's five in five now for Dio Powell. Well, tremendous work. Sheffield had done all that was needed of them. And it's just amazing how that ball was just ripped away from the loose forward, Rod Doyle. But full credit to him, and Powell not too happy. And it is again. And the little halfback did so well. Good support there. Quick thinking by Chester and Powell. As soon as Clinch got that football, he was on his way. Well, formerly with Bradford and Wakefield, and he had a year in Perth. Just the one appearance for the Perth Reds. Well, that... I wonder how costly that might be come the end of the night. Clinch has missed the conversion attempt, but uh, the scoreline is pretty pleasing from Pendlebury's point of view. 16-0, the Blue Sox lead. They're taking their chances, and that really was quick thinking by that little halfback, Gavin Clinch. He's having a fine season. Along with his uh, partner in crime, the standoff, Chris Chester. They're developing week by week. Really, before the start of this season started, uh, not many people fancied Halifax to be up there with the big guns, but they certainly proved a lot of people wrong. They have. They have uh, turned their season round, or their fortunes round, remarkably at the start of Super League 3. It's going to be a big ask now for the Eagles. They've got to uh, get themselves off the ground, and things like that won't help. Broadbent trying to get the ball away in an awful position. Too many people around him there to even try. Tuilangi. Still going Tuilangi. Loses it. Sheffield have got it back, but uh, too late was the cry. There's the half-time siren. Tuilangi not on the score sheet, but uh, three of his teammates have been. And the Blue Stock supporters well pleased with the performance of their team. Paul Rowley set up for the try for Chris Chester with a brilliant pass. Kelvin Skerritt came on as well, the Welsh international captain. And Sheffield Eagles have got some soul-searching to do during the half-time interval. They're without a point, but Halifax have got 16, courtesy of the tries from Moana Chester and Dio Powell. 16-0, the Blue Sox lead. Super League on Sky is sponsored by JJV Sports. Super League on Sky is sponsored by JJV Sports.
There's more live Indy motor racing coming up on uh, Sunday. It's the Pep Boys 400. That's live on Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock on Sky Sports 3. But right now, here on Sky Sports 1, it's uh, Halifax against the Sheffield Eagles. And the Blue Sox ahead by 16 points to nil at half-time. Three tries without reply for the uh, Blue Sox. And uh, I think you can safely say that of all the clubs who struggled in the uh, World Club Championship last year, and Halifax had some nightmares after that particular tournament, the Blue Sox have come out fighting fitter and fresher than most in 1998. I think Steve-O made the point during the commentary that very few people would have expected them to be up there at the top of the table. But the Challenge Cup holders have got a few problems here. And I rather fancy that the uh, happiest viewers at home will be the supporters and the coach and the players of the St. Helens Club, who know that if Sheffield do win here tonight, the pressure is really on them to perform in the last roadshow game at Swansea a week on Sunday when they take on, of all teams, Wigan, but if it stays like this, it gives St. Helens just a little bit of breathing space. But Steve-O, 16 points to nil. Halifax are well worth that uh, half-time situation, aren't I, they? I think so. The difference between the two sides is the fact that uh, Sheffield, I'm afraid, are not moving forward and putting a lot of pressure on the Halifax when they have the football. Quick play of the balls and they're finding themselves that they're getting over the advantage line with considerable ease. And this is a problem that I'm sure that John Keir is trying to sort out at the half-time break. We've already seen that he has to throw in the experienced Aston to try to get them going again. Their approach play has been quite good in that first half, but they've failed to put points on the board. They run four or five power players in that first 40 minutes, came up with nothing. So they've got to change their tactics. They've got to come back to a, a kick over the top. The good chase game, they started off quite well, but I'm afraid they've just gone to sleep. They have, and uh, it's a shame for Sheffield because having spoken to, to John Keir yesterday and again, uh, today before the match he was really enthusiastic and he knew his players would be because uh, as I say they want to push St Helens all the way for that place in the top five there is a, still another half to go of course and I, I think that they are capable of doing it but uh, first of all they've got to try to understand that don't pass the ball unless it's safe on several occasions once again they've applied that pressure they've got close to the Halifax line and what do they do they offload the ball in impossible situations so they've got to be a little bit calm cool and collected but their biggest problem is their defense and it came about and it showed up very very quickly when they got a penalty Bentley was taken from him and Sodji did well but you can see that it stopped and then they just tried to push him that extra inch and from the quick play of the ball Moana throws about and you can see there the slow defense they're hanging back you cannot allow the loose forward to do that situation they did go close and this is one of the power plays that they ran from Turner did very well though didn't they look at that held him up made sure that he couldn't get the try and just to emphasize the point this is where if you keep the book up wide now then let's just hold it there now this fella has decided to come back on the inside now you can see out wide, that defence is okay, they're going to take it. But look at these fellas here, they're having a rest. You cannot afford to do that. This is not the 1950s and 1960s where the big forwards always had a rest on the blind side. This is Super League. This is where you've got to be 100% all the time. And then, look at this. Rod Doyle gets the ball taken off him from clinch and Chester in for a very simple try. Here we see it again, the loose forward, and clinched it ever so well there. Look at the combination. The stand on of, of, and the half back, they're just hunting a pack, though, though, too. Chris Chester and Gavin Clinch, what a season they're having. Not the best attempt by Turner at the end, though, to uh, try to take Powell's legs away. And that has been the difference, really, is the fact that Halifax, when they've had the opportunity, the chances have come their way. They've certainly taken them. And it was good work by Clinch to pinch that ball. I mean, Doyle really should have taken it and held on to it as hard as he could. Well, that's true. And uh, let's just take a peek outside and see uh, what's happening out on the field at the moment. Of course, uh, this is a scene that we have come to know and love in Super League over the past two and a half years. But it's all new to the people of Northampton. The Eagle Man is here, of course, and the, uh, the gangsters on stilts walking around. I think um, people are now realising, Eddie, that uh, it, it doesn't matter whether it's sport, it has to be entertainment as well. 
see the smiles on the kids. The kids are confused. They don't know what's going out in the field. They say, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of speed. There's a lot of hit tackles. Is that but, the ostrich, by the way, that bit you during Boots and All the other year? Uh, well, it didn't have a rider on that one. It was uh, it was riderless. It was in the pen. It was uh, it took a big chunk out of me. I can assure you. But the thing is, Stephen, we were out and about in the the town centre here at Northampton today, and there is genuine enthusiasm for the Super League and for Rugby League. You mentioned the kids, there they are. As you, you rightly say, they don't know what's happening on the field, but they're part and parcel of a really good night out. They're having a good time and that's all that counts. Do the kids on the field know there. what happened, by the way. Well, they, they're going development around this area for, for the schools. They're all trying to learn the game. It, look, it's a family sport. We've been saying that for many, many years. The problem is, for many years, we haven't been giving them the facility to make it a lovely family sport. Now we've turned to summer, and of course it's the best time of the year, or should be, should I say. We haven't had a great summer so far, Well, we have. I think we'll have some more. But we've got a great stadium here, and uh, we believe, and there's one or two Super League officials and club officials here who believe that this sort of stadium, a, a nine or 10,000 capacity, all seated, perfectly safe, undercover, this is the way forward, maybe, for the game, if any local authorities, any clubs are uh, looking in at home. This is the way, maybe, that uh, the game should be looking to. Purpose-built stadiums like this, with a seven, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 capacity. Youngsters, supporters watching in perfect safety, in excellent conditions, clean toilets, clean eating facilities. And more to the point, make it accessible for the public. You don't have to, you, there's plenty of parking space around here. That's right. There's no problems about that at all. You feel safe, the kids are having a good time, the parents are. They feel confident that there's nothing going to go wrong at this stadium. It's well marshalled and it's a great day. It is. And I hope you're enjoying the uh, visit to Northampton as much as we are here in the studio. I don't think at the moment that Sheffield Eagles are enjoying it because they're on the end of a 16-0 scoreline at half-time. Can the Challenge Cup holders reproduce their Wembley form? We'll see in the second half. International Rugby League on Sunday. Join us at three on Sky Sports 3 for Emerging England against Wales from the AutoQuest Stadium in Witness. Sunday at three, Sky Sports 3. Right now, we're just ready for the second half of Halifax against Sheffield Eagles. Blue Sox 16 and the Eagles nil. Sheffield with uh, quite a bit of work to do in front of this uh, good crowd here at uh, the Sixfield Stadium in Northampton. And the Halifax Blue Sox supporters, they will be uh, the better pleased of the fans who are here. Some England uh, supporters as well, by the looks of things. And I wonder whether he will be there on uh, Sunday to see emerging England take on Wales at Widnes. Well, he's watching now as Halifax restart, leading by 16 points to nil. And a big job, a big repair job to do, really, for the Sheffield Eagles in this second half can they get off to a flying start that was what John Keir will be looking for I fancy in the opening five minutes or so of this uh, second 40 minutes bit of a swinging arm there straight away from Carl Harrison on David Watson who didn't take too kindly to that it's pretty important now that Halifax keep their defense pretty solid in the opening 10 minutes I'm sure that's what their coach John Pendlebury would have got across to them that's a fine kick though good work by Bentley though Great chase back from Bentley, but a great chest down the other end from Bright Sodgy, and Bentley is hurt. Well, he spun, him, there. spun him around at uh, Sodgy. Well, he read it well, and you'll see how Sodgy just gets to him and then twists him over. Ooh, and that leg went right underneath, didn't it? The right leg there. Uh, I suspect this might be a knee problem. As he twists through and... Uh, He's in a lot of pain, is Bentley. He's a tough character, so uh, when John Bentley grimaces like that, you know that there's something amiss. He's uh, receiving treatment in back play as this attack develops from 
the Blue Sox. Mercer played the ball then to Rowley. Rowley then finds Carl Gillespie, Turner, and also Willie Morganson getting to him. Rowley flicks the pass to Des Clark. He finds Moana. Moana then to Skerritt. Further wide it goes to Powell. And Powell and Senior tangle. Kick over the top. Not a good one. It's out on the full. Damien Gibson No, he's made a bit of a blunder there. Well, he took the right option, went on the blind side. That one's on the last, so this will be the turnover. Well, Bentley's still out there, but you can see him just on that far touch line. He's limping very badly indeed. Well, Bentley's in the walls, and uh, Chris Chester's also in the walls. He is Bill. Yes, it's a cruel blow for Chris Chester. Apparently, he's broken a bone in his foot. It happened very late on in that first half. Somebody stood on his foot. He suspects it's somebody pretty heavy in the Sheffield side. Broken bone, and it's a bad blow for Chris Chester. He was called into the England squad for the game against Wales on Sunday, and he's... Uh, looking as though he's on his way to hospital when he gets home and he won't be involved in that match. That's a big blow for Chris Chester, a big blow for Halifax also, who have now been penalised for not standing square at the play the ball, so here's a real opportunity for Sheffield. Can they make anything of it with Watson dancing in front of the defence, releases the pass. Shaw, though, had no chance. That was an awful ball from Stevens, and Moana picks up again for the Blue Sox. Well, yet again, we see him trying to get the ball away in an impossible situation. There was someone right in front of the second rower, Darren Shaw. And why Stevens opted to offload anyway. Interference at the play of the ball. That's why the penalty has been given. Once you've made contact with the, uh, the player and done the tackle, you can't touch them again. Aston turns to the official and say, I was kidded. So it's Halifax who are back in possession now, that uh, glorious opportunity wasted. Don't forget, poor old Chris Chester now will be watching with you at home. Emerging England against Wales, Sunday at 3 on Sky Sports 3. First domestic international rugby of uh, 1998. And of course, all building to the Great Britain Kiwi series at the end of Super League throughout uh, November, which uh, you will also be able to see here on Sky Sports. Well, a sad blow there to the youngster Chris Chester, who's had a fine season. Well, he's over the line. Has the Sheffield defence got to him? The referee will hand it on to the video ref to check. It looks like Des Clark might well have got that ball down. He was underneath that pile of bodies, and the ball was fairly grounded. But let's just see when the ball got to terra firma. Well, I think Bouveng went through, and... No, I don't think he got it down. Didn't get it down in the end. Or oh, did he? Oh, that's a hard one. What's underneath all that? Trying to take his shirt off. It was Bouveng that came in late and twisted him through. He didn't get it down on the first attempt, but did he force it? The second attempt. Bouveng coming in. He's the one on the right. Now, the ball doesn't make contact there because of Bouveng's knee. But does he get it down then? Do you know, I don't think so. Well, it's up to the video ref now to decide whether there's any human body in between the ball and Doyle's underneath there sorry I, I call him Bouvang it was Doyle well, let's see this is a difficult one well it is I mean you can tell how difficult it is by the number of times we're watching it in the company of the video referee now he doesn't get it down there it's Doyle's knee and as you see he gets under maybe they'll give him the benefit of the doubt and give this try let's see that's exactly what he's done. He has given him benefit of the doubt. Rod Doyle, not happy. John Pendlebury will be, though, because that try from Des Clark has stretched the Halifax Blue Sox advantage still further. And he knows he's a lucky boy, I think, to get the nod here. Well, we spoke at half-time in regards to their defence, and I'm afraid it was bad. And you can see there that Senior just pointed to fill in and left an enormous gap there for Clark to run through. Running out wide, the substitute. Now, what Senior say, you fill in the middle. He really should have been Senior's man. Carr was coming across. Didn't get it down then. Got it down then. Benefit of the doubt to Des Clark. Four points to Halifax Blue Sox. Gavin Clinch now to try and add two more. 
not kicking badly but just faded then the wrong side of the post so 20 points to nil Sheffield still not dead and buried but a big big hill to climb now there you can see senior is going out wide and he leaves an enormous gap unbelievable for Clark to go through Carr just got a half touch to him and much as they tried the spinning arm of Clark forced the try again we'll see it desperately trying to stop them but what a tremendous run there by the big fella running out wide but you have to point the finger at this poor defensive system by the Eagles who really have been blitzed uh, Stevens off and uh, Sova Tabua, the big Fijian fullback is uh, on and into the fray so presumably that means that uh, Dave Watson will move forward there he is and Sova Tabua will play his usual linking role from fullback and there he is good work by Powell there came off one tackle as he offloaded the football then went back again for a second bite Aston. Well, if ever the team needed a, per, a try to lift their spirits, get back into this match, it's the Eagles. Lawton bounces away from one tackle, can't get away from Gillespie though, or from Gibson. Again, that was on the last tackle. It's the turnover. They went for the power play again, and this defence of the Halifax Blue Stock Socks stands firm once more. Five power plays now, and they've not been able to break them. Well, they've got to change that tactic. John Keir really has to bring the short kicking game into play. You can see clearly the zero on the Sheffield Eagles uh, scoreboard. It means that the five attempts on that power play have brought them no points, so therefore you've got to change your tactics. But Halifax playing with such confidence now. Rowley always getting a bit of frustration taken out on him by Darren Shaw. I think it was the open, uh, open hand, there didn't appear to be a fist clenched in there. Moana with a great break, he's got support there from Mercer, oh and he was looking for the runner, Bubeng, and he lost him, Moana picks up the pieces, still Moana, now clinch, and at last it, the Sheffield defence gets to him, but he in turn releases the ball to Harrison, and the big man throws it forward again. Last tackle here for the Blue Sox oh, and that's Harrison. Silly play and by Turner. the skipper. Dallas. A great position there, and just because he didn't like the uh, tackle, and the official Russell Smith saying, "Don't, don't take it into uh, your own hands." Certainly a knee made contact. Turner again. It's just a little shove, wasn't it, with the knee? Get control. And Carl Harrison didn't take too kindly for it. And you can see there, Turner definitely got him with the knee and how many times do we see the man who retaliates is the one that's penalized you heard the referee there saying well that might have been unjust on this occasion but let me penalize him cannot take control well we saw just before the halftime break didn't we when uh, Powell scored that try that it was Turner again who went in pretty late Let's hope that frustration on the part of the Eagles because they're not playing well. They're not being allowed to play well either. This Halifax defence has been pretty solid, hasn't it? That's a great ball from Shaw. He's got the pass away to Linton Stott, and Stott has gone without the ball. I think Gavin Clinch got a fingertip to that and flicked it out. Yep, it was whipped out one-on-one, -on -one, just in time. Well, that's the second occasion, isn't it? Little halfback Gavin Clinch. Problems well, there for John Keir. The sunglasses have gone. So has the sun. What little of it we've seen today. What little of it we've seen this summer. Let's have news of John Bentley, shall we? Bill. John Bentley sitting on the Halifax bench with his foot in a bucket of ice at the moment. It looks as though he's got a similar injury to uh, Chris Chester, the foot injury. Bentley's words were that between them they've got a pair of uh, decent legs between them but it doesn't look as though John Bentley will be coming back to the fray well he doesn't lose his sense of humor even though he's in pain John Bentley this is Moana and there's no reason why he should lose his sense of humor Mr Bentley because uh, Halifax 20 points to nil ahead and playing well clinch was hit late then by Aston 
Someone to boo is after it, doesn't get it. I think Doyle did. Had to be there as well. Another good kick and chase by Halifax. And Clinch was put under a lot of pressure by Aston. He committed himself to it. And it was a good job that the loose forward Doyle was around. But look at that swarm in defence. Been a feature for Halifax. And again, working hard, the first and second mark had to play the ball. On occasion it was scary. Darren Shaw on the fourth tackle. Been restricted just to 38 metres. Aston thinks about a pass out wide, comes back inside to Broadbent who finds Watson. Watson then gives it to Sovetabua. He looks wide. Morganson was steaming up, held on. It's the power play again here from Sheffield Eagles. Oh. Again, they put it down. Too many cooks spoiling the broth there, I'm afraid. And you'll see that Doyle came across, nearly took uh, Tuilangi's head off. Well, how many times have we seen that, Eddie? The approach work has been good. They've made the half break of the Eagles and then the finishing has again let them down. Rowley to Mercer. Good signing, Gary Mercer, from Leeds for John Pendlebury. And the error count creeping up for Sheffield. Oh, and Turner came in very late then and hit Clinch, who has stayed down. Moana dribbles it forward, Sovetabua collects. Well, they're into it. They've taken Turner out. They've taken it into their own hands. Touch judge has already gone on to tell the referee, Russell Smith. That looked a bad one from up here. Certainly Whether did. Whether he was committed or not, I don't know, but Turner... He was very late. Oh, the, uh, it wasn't a bad tackle, to be fair, but he came in late, used the shoulder, and whilst the ball was being kicked downfield, this is it, that was exceptionally late, and whilst the ball was down here, quite a few of the Halifax players decided to, we can do without that. That was just intent to uh, inflict an injury. And I think he's a lucky boy if he doesn't uh, get a little bit of a stint, at least in the sin bin. It wasn't a high one, it was a shoulder charge. Yeah. Oh, so the referee is taking the report from his two touch judges who both saw it, as did we. Clinches back up and on his feet. Well, I wonder whether the referee will be tempted to put this on report and let the disciplinary committee decide. I think, Next that's all, I think that's all he has left, uh, really, because there was also... Yes, he's on report, Darren Turner. Yeah, there's also a few players could be in a bit of trouble as well because they, they went and attacked Turner in back play. We've already seen the officials say to Carl Harrison that don't take the rules into your own hand. Darren Turner... We're running a fine line here, Darren. I've just said a word with you down here. Apply some common sense now. I'm putting that on report for a late tackle, OK? Penalty to Halifax at the first bounce, which is down here. So Halifax get the penalty. Turner goes on report. It will be looked at again by the uh, disciplinary committee. I think you're, like, you're right, it was late. More than malicious. Maybe that will save him. And I wonder whether, well, the, the disciplinary committee won't look at uh, the incident that followed because there was a lot of uh, recrimination after that. Well, at least the they haven't been asked to look at it anyway. Well, the biggest problem now for the man that you just saw, John Pendlebury, the Halifax coach, is that some of his players do not lose their temper. Keep it cool. They've got a 20-point lead. No point in getting someone sent off just because the opposition start trying to niggle you somewhat. Clinch to Skerritt. Well, Turner's hurt there. He's lost the ball. Skerritt lost the ball. Senior's picked it up. Oh, and Senior tried to get it away. An impossible situation. Bloom has it for Halifax. Well, again, oh, that's a huge blunder. Again, they're trying to uh, keep the ball alive. That was on the first tackle. And Turner is in real trouble. He collided with Skerritt. Moana for Halifax. Oh, and he just bounced Watson out of the way. Here's Rowley, now Bloom, oh, Aston. And this is all going to get just a little bit heated. Mercer's, well, Mercer's swinging gone. punches now. Now he could go off. What have I just said? John Pendlebury didn't want this. 
it's gone absolutely loco out there it was always going to be coming and they're at it again well we've seen the introduction of a lot of verbal in this year and it was a high attack on Jamie Blum that there is no doubt it does not excuse Mercer to start throwing the fists crack and you could see to the right anyway there was another a little bit of a fracas there too difficult times for Mr. Smith okay. Got it. Turner is off and no good says the physio so Darren Turner will not be playing any further part in this and I think Halifax will go for the two points here and we'll settle it down the big problem is for that man John Keir can he settle the team down because there's a few loose cannons running around out there it could be squared up time and I'm sure that the official Russell Smith is hoping that the time that it's taking to take this penalty attempt we'll just see things calm down somewhat let's hope so Jamie Bloom with a shot at goal from this penalty attempt three goals this season his 10th straight game since arriving from witness but just three starts he's been introduced from the bench by John Pendlebury but an important asset to have because of the kicking ability of this man as South African gets two more points for the Blue Sox pushes them further towards victory 22 points to nil and Sheffield with a, an almighty job now with uh, 25 minutes or thereabouts to go and they're delighted aren't they the Halifax fans unbeaten at home and Halifax down on the uh, coupon as the first club so this I suppose could be classed as a home uh, fixture miles away from home at Northampton young and old eh? 55 minutes of the match gone and Halifax 22 points to nil up well I'm afraid that uh, little passage of play or should I say passage of fisticuffs is certainly not what we want to uh, impress upon the fans the new fans watching the game but it is rough and tough it's not the softest game well it isn't and it's a, a huge problem mounting here for uh, Andy Goodway because as well as Chris Chester who has got a suspected broken bone in his foot we've seen Darren Turner limp off and he has also been called into the emerging England squad so what on earth the two coaches Messrs Goodway and Griffiths are going to make of all this after the match tonight we'll have to wait and see Let's, uh, let's hope they both settle down and play some strong football. Good break. Great tackle. Senior with the run and Gibson with the tackle. The call is for the high kick. The obliged. Bloom safe under the high ball. But He's lost it. it. Well, could that be the turning point? There's still plenty of time left. It's still a big ask for the Eagles to start flying, but that's the mistake. It could just help them. He knows it too. Yes, acknowledges the mistake. Well, for once they opted out wide. Watson did well to get Turner there, but what a great tackle by Gibson. Had to be. But it's nice to see Sheffield opting for the kick rather than the power play. That's Rob Doyle. He gets to within five meters of the line. Here's Mark Aston. Now it's with David Watson and Sovata Boer straightens things up. Dances past a couple but can't get away from the next two in. Three metres short now. Stevens pops the ball up to Lawton. Skellett was a mile offside. Well, I thought Skellett had just transferred himself to uh, the Eagles <laughs> outfit then. He was that quick. Needless to say, not taking the kick. They want the four points and possibly six to launch the comeback Darren Shaw all wrapped up by Paul Rowley Gareth Stevens acting halfback Rod Doyle Sommer Morganson out wide but again this uh, 
excellent Halifax defence, restricting the opportunities all the time. And this is Broadbent. Flicks the pass back. Oh. Stevens, did he hang on? No, a little knock on. Spotted by the touch judge and referee. Again, keeping the ball alive when really he should have elected to play that ball quickly. Oh. Another handling error. Stevens gone into the hooking role now. It's uh, really has been a case of keeping the ball alive. 11 8. Not good reading for either coach, but the eight that Halifax have come up with, it's been enterprising. At least they've been twisting in the tackle and offloading when they should. Here's Gibson again. Now Des Clark got the try on the nod of the video ref. Still plenty of time for Sheffield, but they've got to get hold of the football. They've got to try and pierce this rock-solid defence of Halifax. Here's Moana, and he's looked dangerous with these runs and raids from deep. Here's another one. Beautiful. Oh, it was almost a great ball. The ball's come free. Who wants it? We'll play the first knock on. Tyre wanted it. Well, what a big game the loose forward Martin Moana is having. And it's Halifax's head and feed at this scrum because the first knock on was by Sheffield. Moana, yet another strong run. Got a big game. And you can see there that there was the Sheffield legal finger. It was Sodji. And just because the ball did not hit the ground doesn't mean to say it's a, a knock on. It still is a knock on. Big five, so big another five. big opportunity here for the Blue Sox. The scrum fed by Clinch. They come down the short side with Moana again. Moana, he's such a dangerous character running in broken play like this. Here's to Ilangi. Tackled by Darren Shaw. Now Gary Mercer. Mercer trying to crawl his way to the line. Within half a metre, the Blue Sox. Of the try, really, that will seal this match, you feel. Clinch, Clinch, starting, brilliant. With the try, I said it would probably seal it, and it probably will. Clinch's sixth try of 1998. Five tries in his first five games this year, but none since Warrington in May. The drought has broken, and John Pendlebury is emotionless on the sideline. But Halifax, well on the way now. Never mind, seal it, Eddie. This will clinch it. Beautiful play by the little halfback. He's had a wonderful game, hasn't he? Two great steps, barely got a fingertip to him. Remember, it came from a knock-on from the Sheffield Eagles. Yet another mistake, but this is sheer class. Well, he's having a field day, and rightly so. Beautiful pass, you could see how they went through it, Watson went through it, Broadbent couldn't get anywhere near him. That is a fine individual effort. Well, he's added a new dimension to Halifax's play this year as Gavin Clinch, and uh, it's remarkable to think this is his fourth club in as many years he tried at Cronulla Penrith and St George in Australia now here he is in Halifax and he is becoming a, a real cult figure around the new Shea Gavin Clinch with a try and Jamie Bloom to try and add the extras two more points for the Blue Sox it's a pretty good night's work in Northampton Halifax 28 Sheffield nil Again, they caught on the blind side. Two arrows going out wide, but look at the man circle. Just hangs back. It was Lawton. And as soon as he stepped between Lawton and Broadbent, it was always going to be a four-pointer. What a night for the youngster. Well, Gavin Clinch just waiting for the football, but uh, I'll tell you something, Steve-O, this uh, victory, as I'm sure it will be now for Halifax, will be an enormous boost for them, because guess who's next? for Halifax it's Halifax against Wigan and it's on Friday night the 31st of July a game you'll be able to see with us here on Sky Sports we start at 7 and the match will kick off at 7.30 that evening and that's the new Friday format from now until the end of the season on the Super League from that day forward the 31st of July we're on air at 7 and we kick off at 7.30 in the Super League and Halifax Wigan to start us off as we roll up towards the grand final at Old Trafford. 
and what a confidence booster this will be. Well, he lost that. He uh, did. It's gonna, they're going from bad to worse, I'm afraid. Vasily Sabatabua making a real meal of it. Just hasn't been their day. The Eagles never really had any lift off. Brought about by this wonderful defence by Halifax. Who's your man of the match? 0891 33 33 13. You've got about uh, 20 minutes to make those calls, and uh, if you name him right, your name comes out of our computer. You win two tickets to Old Trafford in the grand final on October the 24th. Gibson! Tell you what, Halifax Blue Sox will fancy their chances of going all the way to Old Trafford if they maintain this sort of form, and they have maintained this form from the very first weekend of the new season. The transformation in John Pendlebury's team this year has been absolutely remarkable. Yeah. Clark now again. And full credit to them. The way that they're supporting the man that's carrying the football has been wonderful to watch tonight. Here's Clinch again. All wrapped up this time by Taiwa and Sovatabua. Dio Powell is the man at dummy half. Four tackles, 40 metres made. Three more to go to the try line. Moana, such a handful. Harrison, if he'd have held on to that, he'd have scored. Well, it was a set move, and he knows it too. And the big prop forward loves nothing better than scoring tries. He thought he had another one there. Just couldn't drag it in, but we see the skills there of the loose forward, Martin Moana. Well, it looked as though he was telegraphing the fact that who was going to bring the ball back on the inside and we saw again the Eagles defense well it's just shattered their confidence is totally gone 30 offloads for Halifax and Martin Moana responsible for six of them yeah, he's had a great game and Steve-O just for new viewers what is an offload well it's a man that uh, has gone into the tackle carrying the football and when there's someone gets hold of him he then releases the football to one of his players just like that from just Watson like that. this is Morganson now for Sheffield Stevens to Dale Lawton Lawton with a good run right up the middle he's broken them and there is the support arriving Aston Morganson Aston again touch it for the second time Stott good tackle well, I'm, not so sure, I'm not so sure that Stott did the right option then he is a winger, he should have really gone on the outside, there was plenty of space. Last tackle it was on this set of six, and Jamie Bloom sails into the air and comes up with the kick downfield from Mark Aston. Well, it was a nice kick, oh, that was a bit uh, dangerous option there, they took it well, there's only one man going to get to that one. Sodji had gone far too early, and the South African took it well. But an unusual run we saw there, a moment ago from Skerritt, bringing the knee up unadvisable Clark offloads again in the tackle it wasn't the best but it is uh, collected nonetheless by Marshall Richard Marshall loses that but it was well two knock-ons there was a Marshall knock-on first and Linton Stott couldn't get, pick it up cleanly well Marshall's claiming that it was uh, pulled out I think he might have a case yep. yes Willie Morganson certainly was Pulling the ball away, and that's the reason why Marshall had a uh, little strong look at the official, and then and I think Morganson knows that he got away with it. Well, Sheffield really do need to score to try just to build their confidence. Because they've been completely outplayed by Halifax tonight. Here's Sovatabua. Now Sochi this uh, team is a shadow of the one that's gone four matches unbeaten until tonight he didn't play that at all Sochi he was claiming a penalty he was impeded he says as he tried to get his foot to the play the ball good referee in there rather than stop the play he allowed the advantage Watson changes the direction Aston lovely ball pops it up for senior who drops it and Halifax come away with it again Gibson well, that's been the story of Sheffield's night. Ooh, lashing out there, Aston not quite happy with it, and Gibson did lash out with the boots. And again, we see the official Russell Smith saying, I will handle this, not you. And you can see Gibson 
really, really dangerous play there. Well, if it hasn't been simmering enough today. Oh, dear me. Well, Sheffield got the penalty for that, and uh, Mark Aston just uh, cocked the gun and uh, held it there. Here's a possibility for them. Great work from Harrison. Gareth Stevens thought he was across the line. Aston out wide, Doyle, Senior. Again, this defence just smothers any opportunity for Keith Senior. Sova Tabua once more. Well, then again, we saw Skerritt out of the blocks. Stevens again, this is Lawton. He's going to be forced back into the field of play. Last tackle. Stevens again, dummy half. Back it goes to Aston. Showed the ball wide, gave it to Senior, back into the arms of Sovatabua. That was Doyle. Tywer kicking through, and the ball is uh, just flicked dead. But the referee wants to take a look at it with the aid of the video referee. Well, it won't be a try. I think it was uh, the fullback Gibson that just got that in the end. Morganson was going through for it. Boyle, uh, what should I say? Uh, Jamie Bloom was beaten, and it was uh, Bloom's right boot that got to it in the end. But a neat little piece of work there by the big centre. Lee Morganson just kicking the ball through. So it's no try, which is right, and a goal line dropout because it came off the Halifax man. Petu Taiwa was chasing a possible four points on forthcoming but uh, certainly a little more pressure coming up for the Halifax defense to weather but their goal line dropouts tonight have been pretty lengthy and Gavin clinched the man with another gets it to halfway but Watson this time underneath it Skerritt replaced by Martin Hall Malloy Stevens a dummy half Watson Lawton on the diagonal run. Martin Hall, the hooker, he's really groggy. They're going down and all over the place now. That's Doyle, and Doyle gets over. At long last, Sheffield breach. Well, he's not given it. He wants to check whether the ball was grounded. It looked as though it was all right, but the referee, of course, Russell Smith, he... Uh, he missed one, didn't he, at Wigan. Last time we were at Central Park, and he wants to make absolutely sure on every occasion. That's a try. Yep. But fair credit to him, even though he was in a good position, Russell Smith. He was covered by the fullback's body. I think that'll be given no problem about it. Well, it's some consolation. Tries given. And Rod Doyle gets four points for the Eagles at last. Well, perseverance, keeping the ball alive. And Doyle through the dummy, held off Mercer. Well, they'll be disappointed with that, John Pendlebury boys. Because they have really showed their defence to be solid. And one Mr Mercer won't be too impressed either. Extras are added by Mark Aston. I wonder whether he believes there's still time for a comeback. It would be one of the comebacks in Super League history if Sheffield were to rescue this. But Rod Doyle gets the try, and at last, Sheffield get on the board. But every picture tells a story, and John Keir is not a happy coach at the moment. And I don't think that that face gives the impression that there's hope, or light at the end of the tunnel, or whatever they want to call them these days, but... Uh, to be fair, Sheffield did take advantage. There was a couple of Halifax players walking around groggy. And they got the ball from the kickoff then, courtesy of Keith Senior. They've got 10 minutes to go. And here now is, Sh is uh, Darren Shaw. Get your votes in for the man of the match vote, of course. I wonder whether Sheffield will produce a man of the match performance, a team of the season performance to get back into this. Lawton 
they have the sniff of something Sheffield it's come maybe far too late ball's gone backwards you heard the referee Russell Smith say that uh, you lost the ball after the completion of the tackle anyway you see he had another bite of the cherry and then lost it there must be a Halifax feed I suppose you can't blame the big fella trying to keep the ball alive at this point in time, 28-6. Russell Smith, the match referee there, just checking everything now on the video referee. Remember the Terry O'Connor try that he awarded without going to the video ref at uh, Central Park, Wigan Saints. He was caught out that night. He refuses to be caught out again. Any doubt now in his mind, and he hands it on to the video ref for clarification and rightly so I know you're not too impressed with the uh, lot of the referees going to it all the time but it is there yes and it does clear up a lot of problems yes I won't make you suffer anymore <laughs> here's Harrison on the halfway line it's discipline that's got to be the key now for Halifax well, a big kick downfield now here from Clinch and it's a good one. Turn them all around. It's going to just bobble in that in-goal area. So Sovatabu will have to run it back, and he does. The Powell gets to him. Well, the performance that the Sheffield Eagles uh, produced at Wembley to beat Wigan by 17 points to eight had the John Keir stamp all over it. Attention to detail, concentration, and every player reaching his peak form on the day. But this is the most uncharacteristic of Sheffield Eagles performances here and Halifax have won it and won it well well they're penalized there for putting the arm underneath in between the legs which is outlawed now thankfully you'll see Harrison not allowed to do that anymore how many accidents have uh, come away from the spear tackle in the past? The better rules to be introduced, I feel. Halifax uh, now on a real run, and uh, a run that John Pendlebury hopes will take them all the way to the playoffs and uh, the Old Trafford Grand Final on October the 24th. He said before this match he feels his team needs four more victories to be absolutely safe for a place in the top five. Well, this is one of them, and it extends the Halifax run. And Halifax run now that is three in a row, and eight out of nine, as Halifax really do close in on a place in the top five, and they have top three firmly in their sights. The top three, of course, will give those clubs a second bite at the cherry during the playoff series. Sheffield, though, are over for another, I think that is Morganson. And off we go again to the video ref. Russell Smith, caught out once this year, will not be caught out again. Hey. So let yeah. the video ref make his mind up for him. I'll get in position one of these times. There doesn't uh, appear to be any problem with that, and I think you just overheard the referee saying I'll get in the position correctly one of these times. Rather wry smile on his face. There'll be no problem, I'm sure. Yes, the try is given for Sheffield Eagles. Won't do the Blue Sox points difference any good. And it will give the Sheffield Eagles a little bit of respectability, maybe. Well, John Pendlebury will not be pleased again to allow Morganson in for a try. Good effort, though, and good work by Shaw. It was a nice offload, wasn't it? Aston with the boot. Brings it in front of the posts. But at least they're in double figures. 28 points to 10 and uh, that is a scoreline really that is flattering Sheffield Eagles it sure is but full credit to the run on the Bryan side by Shaw took a big hammer in as well Moana got a big hit on him but full credit to Morganson for using the strength got it down no problem downward pressure under control his first try of the season Willie Morganson back in favor now having played in the last six before tonight another shallow kickoff from Aston doesn't quite come off this time Moana picks up again well I think it'd be a safety first now from the Blue Sox use the forwards and play out the six good kick and chase experience there from Mercer running from dummy half 
wasn't impressed with the tackle from Keith Senior. Harrison straight at Darren Shaw. Well, I must say, Eddie, you did mention the fact that uh, Sheffield, of course, not producing that same skill that was on display at Wembley, but full credit to this Halifax defence. It's been an outstanding effort. It has, excellent. They really have not allowed Sheffield any room to play. Not up until those last two tries. Rowley gets the pass out wide, clinch, dabs it through, finds touch. Well, we saw John Bentley hobble off earlier on. Let's have a word with uh, John Bentley now, he's with Bill. It's a mash unit down here on the uh, Halifax bench. There's Chris Chester with his foot up and John Bentley. Carl Gillespie's got a thumb injury as well. Uh, it looks as though all your injuries, which you've managed to avoid this season, have come at once, John. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's myself and Chess in between us. We've got a pair of feet that, uh, that are working, but... Um, yeah, I mean, just on the game, it, it's gone pretty well for us, Bill, this evening. Obviously, we're tying a little bit towards the end, but uh, Sheffield never give in. They play for 80 minutes, we are aware of that, and uh, they're finishing strongly, but we've just got to weather that, and uh, three, min three minutes on the clock and, and, and finish with two points down there. Fantastic. I mean, up until these last couple of Sheffield tries, this last late burst from them, it's been a great defensive effort as much as anything from Halifax, hasn't it? Yeah, we have. We haven't really hit the straps in terms of our possession with the ball. We've taken a couple of opportunities, but... That's always going to happen. They were 20-odd points behind, and uh, they're going to throw everything at us. And uh, I think we're just watching the clock a little bit. And, uh, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gamed as far as uh, Sheffield's concerned. They've scored a couple of late tries, but uh, I think we're too far in front for them to catch us, Bill, aren't we? You're off to hospital now, are you? Yeah, they're going to have a look at my foot, which uh, is a bit worrying. It's, 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 it's nearly the size of your, uh, your leg there, uh, Bill, down there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> leg, I said, not head. <laughs> Well, he's always a man with a little smile, John Bentley, in, even in the face of adversity. Well, a mistake, a rare one, I must say, and a smile from Gary Mercer. He's certainly played his part. Got a fine season. Certainly got the experience. His first of the match, and uh, a bit disappointed with that. Just uh, missed a tackle, and... Doyle scored the try, but apart from those two glitches, he's had a fine night. Salvatabua inside the last two minutes. Halifax safe and sound. Malloy drops it. Play on. Harrison has it back for Halifax. Halifax safe and sound in third place before this match started. Bradford, of course, who have to play London. Tomorrow in Edinburgh, our next match on the road. They know now that uh, a win for them is imperative to stay on the heels of Halifax Blue Sox. Bradford in fourth place, but London will want the points now to take over sixth spot from Sheffield Eagles. So the pot really is boiling in the Super League this year as the race continues for places in the top five. Rowley dummy half. Clinch. Ooh, Here's what? Mercer. Oh, he goes round the tackle from Aston, or attempted tackle, and from Sobatabua. Well, that's a great try for Mercer. Sobatabua and Aston just flicked at him, really. And Mercer just uh, crowns the evening with a try, but picks up an injury in the process. Gary Mercer gets the try, but another injury headache for John Pendlebury. Well, this is like the old pinball wizard. Sobatabua didn't have his flipper working here. Bump just sends him off. Go to the line. Not the best attempt. And I'm sure that John Keir will uh, point this out to him. Wasn't all that brilliant from Aston, who was in the sweeping position. And Mercer says, Thank you very much indeed. I'll take the four points and off it. Uh, made a mistake a few seconds earlier. Makes up for it big time with four extra points. He does, and I don't think there's too much wrong with Gary Mercer. Maybe just a touch of cramp. He comes win. back into the uh, field of play anyway. Having scored the last uh, Halifax try, last Halifax try it must be. John Pendlebury knows it's time up. The walkie-talkie's back in the pocket. The two points are safely secure, and those people will have a good trip home. Halifax march on in third spot. And this incredible transformation for the Halifax Blue Sox club continues. And I wonder whether it can continue in their next match at the new Shea against Wigan at the end of the month. 
once the roadshow fixtures are out of the way it's Halifax Wigan Friday the 31st of July at the new Shea 7.30 kickoff match you can see on Sky Sports what a battle royal that should be Jamie Bloom then with another conversion attempt 32-10 it is at the moment and 32-10 it will stay and there's the full-time siren a very good night's work from the Halifax Blue Sox John Pendlebury celebrates his new two-year contract at the new Shea with victory disappointment for Mark Aston Carl Harrison the war horse who leads from the front the Halifax captain <laughs> 